Welcome to Debates 2005 with your host, Frank Simos. Hello. Hi, I'm Frank Simos, and I'm your host of Debates 2005. And today we focus on Derby, the mayoral race. And with us we have the Republican challenger, Tony Stafari. Mr. Stafari, thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, the Democratic incumbent, Mark Garofalo, Mayor Mark Garofalo, seeking, seeking his fifth, fifth term. That's right. Good thanks afternoon. for being here, Mayor. It's nice to be here. Um, Prior to the show, uh, we had a, a coin toss, and it was determined that uh, the mayor would take the first question. So, Mayor, let me ask you this. Why do you continue to run? You're going for your fifth term. Why? Well, I continue to run because I love what I do. Uh, I've been involved in government my whole life, my whole adult life, since I was 18 years old. I uh, was on the Board of Apportionment Taxation for the city of Derby. I chaired that for a number of years. I was on the Board of Alderman for four years. Um, I took a few years off uh, from the government uh, elected office and um, I continue to do it because we have a many challenges in the city of Derby uh, that we've been able to meet head on uh, and address issues that have not been uh, dealt with in Derby for a long time and I feel that uh, you really can't complain about what's going on unless you're prepared to do something about it. I did that as a volunteer uh, and for the last 20 years uh, it's been a real big part of my life so um, and I think it's important that we have a public debate uh, on these issues uh, mm -hmm. facing the city. And uh, I'm disappointed that uh, my challenger will not uh, have other debates. And I want to reissue the challenge right here today to uh, okay. challenge him to a couple more debates well, get so that we can have a public discourse. On All right. Thing. Mr. Stavere, you t uh, why do you want? Why did you decide to run for mayor? I've been involved with the city of Derby. I've been in business for 28 years. I've been involved with a lot of civic groups, and for, uh, the slowness of the progress on how long things are being uh, taking to happen to get anything accomplished. Our downtown is still uh, a mess. And we're losing a lot of uh, potential businesses. We have nothing but a negative image that is... Uh, portrayed to the, our citizens and uh, it, I remember the community of it being prosperous city everybody had a positive image of Derby I would have loved my children to grow up in my old neighborhood Hawkins Street neighborhood where there was just uh, people would have their doors open all the time children be playing outside all the time you walk downtown to the stores there were so many stores so many businesses there that it was like a mini New York City as, as you walk through the streets you always see friends you see people shopping uh, and it was just a healthy community and it's it has me saddened with the way our community has become and it's just taken so long and to me on the length of the on why it's taken so long is my biggest concern it's been okay so i mean there's there's things you see need to be done uh before we move ahead on some questions mrs ferry will you clear the air for us about the issue of delinquent taxes um, on your business what has happened in my issues with delinquent taxes back in 2002 my taxes went up 250 percent and I tried to get an answer back then I called the mayor's office I called uh, Keith McLiverty's office and I tried to s solve the issues by find out exactly what what would happen and I didn't receive any phone calls back so what I did is through my aggravation I called up the the city tax collector and set up a payment plan now also what happened is they went back three years reassessed for three years plus interest and penalty I got a nice hefty payment back t back then it, uh, business wasn't great and and that's what happens you know in my industry my business the restaurant business everything affects us from bad weather people won't come out if the economy is bad we are uh, uh, what's the best way to explain it expendable income business if people have an extra twenty dollars they'll go out so if something affects their pocket like right now is gasoline and oil so it affects our industry bad people go on vacations the summertime 
barbecues, people go out less. So, you know, when we got hit with a hefty bill as, as we did, we didn't have it. So what I did is I set up a tax uh, payment plan. And, and I just for the record, it was about two thousand dollars. Something like was that back taxes. No, back tax. Uh, back taxes no. back then. The whole amount was close to ten thousand. Oh, more. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It, w it was a substantial amount that we couldn't come up with the money. All right. It says all our other taxes uh, are paid up. Okay. Our property tax, everything else is paid up. Okay. All right. Mayor, Mayor yeah, anything you want I mean, to let's, add? Well, let's get to the real heart of the issue. The issue is not falling behind on taxes. The issue is that you underreported your personal property to the city by 70% and you got caught in the audit and you, the city could only go back three years and that's a function of the assessor. There was an audit and you were under reporting. That's the issue. It's not about falling behind on the taxes. Mm -hmm. It's about under reporting. Reporting one set of numbers to the city and another set to the IRS. And we could only by law go back three years on this matter. Uh, and so the real issue is how many years has this been happened? Will you be willing to show that this, uh, how, how many years w was it being under reported? And the issue uh, of the payment plan uh, is, hey, I understand people, th there's issues that, like that with, uh, with respect to the payment. But the payments have been erratic, there have been bounced checks, there's been a whole host of issues. But the real issue is they underreported uh, what okay. it was to the city and they got caught by the auditor. And I, I would ask that there be a full disclosure on this matter so we can see how long that ha has uh, been going on. Because the fact of the matter is, if we can't right. trust you with your taxes, how are we going to trust you with ours? Okay. It's a very basic point. All right. very I, there, there's several issue. issues I want to get to. So, uh, Mayor, let me, let me turn to this. Um, it seems that there's a lot of things, a lot of projects in the starting gate for Derby. What's taking so long to get them going? Well, the, the downtown project is, the, we're the first administration to tackle this downtown project uh, in an aggressive way. I mean, and, and, and it's ta we have said from day one, this project is not going to be a grand slam home run. It's going to be a series of singles. It's, it's just because you don't see things going on doesn't mean that it's not happening. We foreclosed on the buildings on Main Street. We have done environmental testing. We have uh, a preferred developer on board that we had to solicit for. We negotiated a contract with them. We started to tear buildings down and the, we were sued. We, we have a preferred developer agreement where the developer is going to pay for the settlement of the suit, the remediation of the asbestos, the um, tearing down of the rest of the buildings, and it's going to be a major project. You have uh, structural issues with Route 34. It's in a floodplain near the uh, the Naugatuck and Housatonic Rivers. And when it's built, it's going to be a 1,500 vehicle parking garage below 700 uh, dwelling units, residential dwelling units, market rate, 60% of which will be uh, owner uh, ownership opportunities. The rest will be uh, rental, uh, at market rate rental. It will be... Um, an opportunity for people to have a mixture of housing, mostly studios, single bedrooms, uh, so that it doesn't have a big impact on our schools. It will also have road infrastructure, sidewalk infrastructure, 100,000 square feet of retail space, uh, including a movie theater, an urban style movie theater like they did uh, in the city of New Haven. And it's going to be specifically designed to not have fast food restaurants uh, and have it be smaller uh, retail components. In addition to the fact there will be greenways, uh, green space in the project, uh, tying it into our Greenway project that we also did. And uh, we also have put into the agreement uh, with the developer that we, the city will have architectural review by the city and by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So it is a major long-term project, and I am not going to tell you that it can happen overnight because somebody that says they can do it quicker or uh, faster, either they don't understand the magnitude of what's going on because they know what we've been doing. We've been meeting with the developers on a regular basis, meeting with the uh, uh, tenants that have to be relocated, and we're going to make sure they get relocated. Mm -hmm. and we're going to do this in a professional way, and we see a tremendous amount of private investment in our city, and the best days are yet to come. All right, Ms. Teferi, I know that's been a, a, one of the main tenets of your campaign. What are your thoughts on uh, redevelopment, especially the whole uh, downtown revitalization? Before my involvement in the restaurant business, I was involved in the construction business. So I know what it takes to get projects accomplished. I have seen large projects. I've been involved in large projects. 
and I've seen small projects. And what has happened is, you know, there's too many, too much politics involved in the, in this administration. They interfere with everything. They want to be involved in everything, and it, it hinders progress. Well, no, you better uh, want to be involved uh, in this stuff. Of course, okay. we want to be involved during, in this stuff. That's our job to do that kind of stuff. The you lay episodes. out the project in any in any project. Look at what Milford has done. They have done things in such a short time span. They've had similar problems. But you lay out the project, you figure out all the, all the problems that, ha uh, that you're going to come across, and these are what you have the experts. These are what the developers do. The city l lays out what they want done. The developers figure out all the problems, all the testings, all the permits that have to be gotten, and they do it. A developer, quicker it can get the job done, more profitable it is. Just look at the building industry. Price of steel last year, to co compared to the price of steel this year, it'll, it'll raise doubts on, you know, if, if the developer had to come up with $100 million last year, he's going to have to come up with $300 million this year. A developer does not want to take this the time that he's taken, uh, that is being taken. We cannot talk issues to death. We have to talk in reality in what the non-political way, the business way. Whether we have the right people in the town that could talk to the developer, whether we have to hire them or not. You know, building a high riser like they do in New York City is it doesn't it doesn't take uh, you know it's, this administration's been in eight years. <laughs> they would have had two or three built by now. So you, you cannot take the time that it's taken now. It's, there's too many too much politics, too many projects that have started, and none of them have finished. Mayor, uh, how do you rebut that? Well, I mean, let's let's get to the heart of this. The whole ulterior motive is, the, Mr. Stafiri and his slate, they're against the downtown project. They're against the downtown project because they've said it, and that's the whole point here. We stand firmly committed to this project. And the fact of the matter is, this is not development. It's not like taking a, a, a piece of green land, a farm, and building a bunch of houses. This is redevelopment, and you have to understand that. It's complicated. There's environmental issues. There's structural issues. There's a whole host of issues. And they are against this project. They've said it. It's been in the Connecticut Post. They're against the project. Mr. Stafiri mm -hmm. is the president of the old Birmingham Businessmen's Association. And they've been opposed to this project from day one. The fact of the matter is there's several people that uh, are opposed to this project who are bankrolling his campaign. And his headquarters is right in the redevelopment district. This is the very... This is, is, gonna, is, is this that will, accurate? This are, you, will are you against roll the city back 10 years? I'm not against downtown revitalization, what he's speaking of in regards to the old Birmingham Business Association. We wanted the facade saved or some of the old buildings saved. We want downtown revitalized more than they do. We want it to happen faster, not slow like it's happening now. We, we understand how that will, that will increase our tax base so we could stop getting these tax increases. Seven out of the eight years that this administration has been in office, and our taxes have gone up. Our ta our ta we're, <laughs> we've gone from 29 mils to 37.7 mils. We've gone. Our, our citizens, uh, I've been going knocking on door to door, and our citizens are crying. They, they, they are wondering whether they can heat their houses this year with a higher oil bill or pay their tax bills. This is what they're asking me. It says, it says they want to know is where is that one, over a $1 million surplus every year but the tax is going up? It says, you know, we are very pro-business that we understand by getting businesses into town, they pay for services that they don't use. They pay towards education, which they don't send any children to school. They pay for garbage removal, which businesses have their own dumpster. So having businesses in town is, this is what you want. This is the heart of, of your tax base. Now I understand that Swiss Army Knife was just interested in moving into Derby, and they were just shown no eagerness to communicate with them 
to, to try to figure out a, a way. Fountain Lake would have been a great place to put them. Instead, we'd rather keep empty spaces, not, not producing any income. He says, the, 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 along uh, the, the, the old beer property, which is the dot property now, which things uh, that the businesses downtown were supposed to be relocated to there. Now, all of a sudden, they can't be relocated to there. Why do we have to waste eight years before we find that out? There. Um, well, first of May, all, we haven't uh, had before we get on that, let me just ask you one specific thing. In May, you signed an agreement, or the, or the city signed an agreement mm -hmm. with the Ceruzzi Corporation. Yes. Where is that going, or why hasn't it gotten started? Well, it, it is being, it is started. Well, so how? There, there, there are issues that uh, they're dealing with. They have a due diligence period. They're looking at uh, geotechnical testing that's being done. Uh, in the property because the, don't forget that was where the river was before behind on the south side of Main Street and you have to be real about the project I mean you acknowledge it's happening and it is happening and they're doing geotechnical testing they are, are paying the, the, we negotiated a deal so that the developer will settle the the lawsuit uh, with the demolition contractor they paid for the remediation of those buildings and they're also paying for the, the demolition of the the uh, three buildings that uh, are already started but there's been no to say you can do it faster there's been no talk of how and what uh, what any alternatives to this. It is happening. The fact of the matter is, it is happening, it's moving forward, and, and you're not going to see every step of the way. You're not going to see every step of this because there are things that the developer has to do um, on its uh, on its uh, budget and the, the whole package of things. So when you see it, that's going to be the end of the, the project. And it is moving forward because we set, settled the lawsuit and the buildings are going to be coming down. And when you talk about the taxes, I mean, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's unbelievable to say the taxes, yeah, the taxes have gone up. They, ha they have gone up. Uh, the, the equivalent of one mil a year. And they wouldn't go up as much if everybody paid their taxes on time. If everybody paid their fair share, they wouldn't have to go up. Because if everybody took that approach of sending in one set of numbers to the city and another to the uh, IRS, we wouldn't, ha we wouldn't uh, have it. If everybody did that, we'd be in big trouble. And the fact of the matter is, the, all the money that's been raised for taxes has gone to pay for projects for the city that were voted on in a bipartisan way by our city, uh, by both parties, bipartisan way. And that, the vast majority of that money has gone to fund education. Okay. It's going to fund education, and it's been done in a way be because we had a catch-up from the, the uh, reckless uh, uh, approach that the previous Republican administration did to not funding education. We're funding the operating, we're funding maintenance of our school buildings, and uh, we're doing it in a very prudent way. The fact is, when you talk about taxes, you can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. If you're going to cut taxes, you're going to lay off teachers. So tell me which teachers you're going to lay off and how many police you're going to pull off the street because that's where the money is going. Okay, we'll get we'll get to education because that is an important topic. Uh, while well, we're still on redevelopment, one more, uh, Mr. Stafari, tell me what's your vision for O'Sullivan Island? Uh, what, what would you do? My vision on O'Sullivan Island, which I was on a committee about six seven years ago, and the uh, committee was that we had founded that. that putting uh, athletic fields there, put, putting a, a picnic area there, and putting a fishing, a fishing do a docks there, and maybe a, a little marina. It's, O'Sullivan Island is a gateway to the city. 130,000 cars a day drive by Route 34 and Route 8. And, the, and what do they see? They see O'Sullivan Island and they see Main Street. I'm tired of being the butt of everybody's joke, or, uh, not the, me, the city of Derby. That's how much love for the city of Derby I have. I, 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 I say that they're saying it to me, and all the citizens of Derby feel the same way. When, the, when all these jokes, these radio stations that make comments about Derby, I take it personally. I've grown up in this town, and I've gone to school in this town, I've worked in this town, and I, I take it personally. And, and the things that could be done very simply are just being done nothing but in a complicated way to make it last long for, from 
taking down buildings, not, not paying the, the person who takes it down, her, just telling them that, the, that there is permits that have been take, issued and they were not issued. That's why the city ended up getting walloped another $700,000 that they shouldn't have had to pay. These are the reasons that are slowing things up. This is the reason why after two years of knocking down three buildings and one of the best buildings there, the old Howard Barber building, which the, the, the wrecking company had a hard time knocking down, but they choose not, not to pay them for two years and they thought they could get away with it and now all of a sudden, well, lo and behold, the city had to pay and they had to pay late fees and everything. All that's, for what? All for delays. Okay. That, first of all, that's Mayor, not true, and I'm not even going to get into paying your bills okay, on time can, and all can that. Can you give stuff. me your view on Sullivan's Island first? Oh, oh, Sullivan's Island is is a long-term project as well. I mean, it's there's environmental contamination. It's in the floodplain. Nothing can be built there. No structures can be built there. But it can be recreational opportunities for the city. O'Sullivan and Hog Island, which are neither of them are islands. They're both peninsulas adjacent to the that's downtown what I said. area. And the point is that uh, we're looking at it. It's going to be a long-term project because the environmental stuff has to be cleaned up. We have to deal, it's, a, it's again, it's a complicated matter that has to be dealt with from all the, the towns and cities who participated in the fire school, the EPA, the DEP, there, and uh, it can be a recreational opportunity. And it's going to tie into the Greenway project that this administration fought for, funded, and is almost finished. So it's, it's uh, a we, natural let, recreational let's, opportunity. Let's move to another complicated issue, all right. All right, education. Um, let's move into education. Tell me about that. Are you satisfied with the way uh, you know the state of education in the city as it is well, now? We have we have to improve education. There are issues. There's been a Republican stranglehold on the Board of Education that we are uh, going to uh, change. We have proposed uh, six people to run for the Board of Education, uh, all of whom have the best interests of our children in in mind and. They are very well-educated people with a vast amount of experience. We have a professor in immunology at Yale University, a police officer, a dentist, a nurse, a retired teacher, and an elementary school teacher. We have qualified people that understand their role as school board members is that of setting policy, not micromanaging the, uh, the education system. That's what the superintendent's job is. And I think they understand that. We have uh, a full platform for uh, turning this uh, education system around. And our record is clear. We have a strong record of um, having the appropriate amount of funding for education to uh, making sure that the operating uh, expenses are, are covered within the means of the city. And we're also maintaining our buildings. We passed a $3 million bond issue to um, put new uh, floor, uh, gym floors at Irving and Bradley School, all new energy efficient doors and windows. We're taking the old uh, electric heating system at Derby High School and completely replacing it. It's going to save us $150,000 a year uh, in energy costs just at the, at, at the high school by doing this. And it's being done on a, a performance contract, so it's uh, really at no cost to the taxpayers. A major uh, infrastructure investment. And okay. we've been doing that, at maintaining the buildings, making sure that programs are improved, and um, and making sure that there's, uh, uh, right. we're maintaining the buildings. All right, Mr. Ferry, let's see, give us your vision of education for the city of Derby. Education, my family and I, we feel so strong about education. Education of our children is the most important issue that we, we could have. This is how strong we feel about it. Every year for the past seven to, uh, 18 years, I would say, for the seventh and eighth grade honors students, my family, we host a, a free honors banquet to the 7th and 8th graders. This is how strong we believe. We're, we're constantly donating uh, from gift certificates. Uh, this Wednesday we're donating sauce for, uh, for the soccer, bank, uh, soccer uh, fundraiser that they're doing. We're, we're constantly helping. Right now, our, our schools are overcrowded, our grammar schools. There, there are children being taught in such tight, cramped quarters in in large closets. I went to school in every school. I, I know exactly where some of the classes are. Our grammar schools do have a problem, and that is overcrowded. Seventh and eighth graders are in the high school. 
mixed in with the older kids, which have different growing problems. Well, they're not so much problems, attitudes that they, they have to go through. Says, we cannot tolerate this. We cannot tolerate this. And it's been getting tolerated for eight years. A lot uh, things, committees on top of committees have been formed. Uh, uh, whatever happened to the results to these committees, nobody seems to know. Uh, misinformation, I've gone to people's doors. And it says that, uh, how, why do we need to have a, a new high school? It says, it's, it's not a high school that we need. It, uh, according to, I would propose to sit down with Janet Robinson, our educators, find out exactly what all our needs are, and this is what, and we, this is what we have to solve. Okay. okay. Well, what, what Janet, do you say? What happened to the committee? We have to. We have to. We're running out of time. But I want. I want to give you ample time to get to your to your summations. Uh, from the coin toss, we decided that uh, Mayor Garofalo, you'll do your summation first. You have a minute and a half. You're on. Uh, the fact of the matter is, with respect to education, we're dealing we're dealing with the issue, and we already have met with the with the school administrators and are putting forward a plan. Uh, when you look around Derby, the uh, and you ask yourself, is Derby better today than it was eight years ago. And, and it is better because we have Home Depot, we have BJ's, we have Walmart, we have the ShopRite uh, Plaza, we have a newly renovated green, we have improvements to the Sterling Theater. And we are going to keep moving forward with this downtown project. We're committed to it. We're committed to continuing to improve the quality of education, to demand uh, accountability from the administrators, and put forward a plan for uh, more school space uh, that makes sense, that makes financial sense. The fact of the matter is, the uh, you heard him say it, as it relates to saving the buildings on Main Street. They're opposed to the downtown project and they're a pro, opposed to the redevelopment uh, plan that is before the city. It dis, that distinguishes the two candidacies. We're for it, they're against it. And the fact of the matter is that we're going to move ahead and push forward with this developer, relocate the uh, existing businesses, and make sure that this project becomes a reality. You have to have the grit, the determination, the experience to make sure this stuff happens. And, and as it relates to the other thing, uh, the other issue of the taxes, if you can't trust yep. somebody yeah, with their taxes, how can you trust them with ours? Mayor, yeah, thank you very much. Mr. Stafari, you have a minute and a half to sum up. Are we better now than we, uh, than we were eight years ago? What capital expenditures do we have? What do we have for a new school system? What do we have for our taxes gone from 30 to 29 to 37.7 mils? What do we have? Our downtown is a disgrace, and I am for getting that downtown fixed up as fast as possible because that will improve our tax base. Our education does need, uh, uh, needs... Uh, <sighs> Answers. We do need to address the problems of our education system. My family and I, we have done, the love of the city that we have is insurmountable. The, we have taken a piece of property four years ago to show you the plaza on the green that was a blighted piece of property. By being a landlord to, to know what the uh, uh, prospective tenants' uh, needs are, you help them out from uh, giving them free rent to fix up, being passionate when new businesses start. If they're late on their rent, I've had tenants that first started off that w we were... Uh, completely lax on collecting, collecting the rent because we didn't want to cause any dual hardship okay. on them. And th this is our community spirit. Mr. Stafari, we want to, I want to thank both of you gentlemen. Mr. Stafari, the Republican challenger for the mayoral race for Derby, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for a very informed and spirited debate. Uh, Mayor Mark Garofalo, a Democrat seeking his fifth term. Thank you yes, for being thank here. You. Thanks, and I want to thank our viewers for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you again. Thank you.
Debates 2005 has been a production of Telemedia Cable.